evening. Good evening, Sister Kenya. It's another great lesson we have there today. Yes, it is. And our youth topic today is a protective family. And our scriptures is talking today from Exodus 2, 1 through 10. And before we start, let's just have a word of prayer. Father God, we just come before your presence. Thank you for another day that was not promised unto us. Father God, as we go through this lesson today, Father God, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would take full control, that we would receive something out of this lesson, Father God, that it would lead us and guide us in a path that you have laid out for us. And this and other blessings we ask in your Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 A protective family. Sister Kenya, what do you think about when somebody says a protective family? A protective family, to me, uh, means you do everything in your power to make sure no harm comes near those you love. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, family is just not your biological family. That's your right. family, we have our church family, mm-hmm. uh, we have our work family. Family is a, a, a unit mm-hmm. that's made up of individuals. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of different families, uh, but our lesson today is talking about uh, our immediate family, Mm -hmm. and a very good lesson, a Mm -hmm. a very good reminder Mm -hmm. for us today to kind of make us more aware Mm -hmm. of uh, what's going on in society, Mm -hmm. and to kind of be mindful that we need to do a little bit more to protect our children mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just protect our family mm-hmm. as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, our key verse, Exodus 2 and 2, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Mm-hmm. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him mm-hmm. for three months. Three and, months. and our story just goes on to explain uh, why this lesson a protected family is so important for us today as it was for them back then. Mm-hmm. And in our youth lesson overview, it says, the turbulent world can endanger our well-being in many ways. How do we survive in a chaotic world? Mm-hmm. Moses' family went to great lengths to save him. And we are in a chaotic world today. I was just uh, talking to my daughter not long ago. Who would have thought that we'd be wearing masks now? Uh, The social distancing. And, you know, just going back five years ago, such a dramatic change Mm -hmm. between five years ago and now. Mm -hmm. So we're living in in a chaotic world today with so much different things that is going on Mm -hmm. like never before. But we should not be surprised because the Bible already speaks of that. And then in our lesson that today, it deals with a chaotic time. Mm -hmm. Uh, The background on this lesson is uh, dealing with how Joseph, remember when Joseph came to Egypt and he brought his family over. Mm -hmm. Well, this Pharaoh now that's over Egypt didn't know nothing about Joseph, right. you know, and now there is a threat mm-hmm. to the Israelites, mm-hmm. males, mm-hmm. you know, and when we go into this lesson, um, our males, it's a threat of our males today, just like it was back then. So would you like to start reading our lesson? Yeah. Uh, children are one of God's most precious gifts. Mm -hmm. Because they are gifts from God, parents are responsible for protecting, nourishing, and training them to love and worship God. And a scripture that kind of piggybacks off of that is Deuteronomy 6 and 7. And I'm going to go back, Deuteronomy 6 and Mm 5. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. That verse just 
tells me that no matter what you go through, the downtime, any extra time you have, you should be explaining to your children this word. Mm -hmm. You should be feeding this word to them daily, mm -hmm. as often as you can, because that's the only way that they're going to get it in them. Mm -hmm. The way our parents taught us, the way our pastor taught us, mm -hmm. just people every day that you know we encounter who are Christians, that they share a word with us, we should be putting this word into our kids mm -hmm. now right. more than ever. That's right. That is so true. Uh, the Gospels reveal God's spot for these precious gifts mm -hmm. and his passionate desire for their protection and freedom from exploitation. Uh, we see so many, I know Tiffany has, has written this last uh, short film, See Something, Say Something, mm -hmm. and our children are being exploited in so, so many, many ways mm -hmm. today. Uh, we, we see so many that are missing, mm -hmm. uh, so many are running away, and it's because of what they're exposed to on the computer, on the internet, social media, mm -hmm. you know, all these things are being thrown at our kids and it's our responsibility to protect them even from what they're going to be looking at on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, you used to couldn't watch certain things, especially after a certain time of mm -hmm. night. These kids up two, three o'clock in the morning on their cell phones, mm -hmm. on YouTube, on uh, social media, you know, there's so many things that they're faced with today that we weren't faced with back then. But as a parent, and even uh, an aunt or uncle, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure that we are protecting our children from the outside world and things that are going on that, that they're being faced with. Right, the different influences that they have. Uh, this attitude of everything is okay. You can do right. anything. You can do everything that right. you want to do, and it's okay. As long as it's what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of society that we are in mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And that's why the topic is says a protective family. Because mm -hmm. we have to protect our families now more than ever mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So our Lord considered those possessing a childlike trust as the greatest in his kingdom. And that tells me that God is looking at our babies. They're innocent. Mm -hmm. And as adults, when people harm children, I think that's one of the worst, to me, mm -hmm. that's one of the worst things a human can do mm -hmm. is harm a child because that that's what God says they're the they're the greatest in his kingdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have to become like children mm -hmm. that means we have to be humble enough children they are innocent, innocent. they don't know um uh, at, at until a certain age mm -hmm. they haven't come to that's understand true. the wickedness mm -hmm. of the world mm -hmm. so like you said Whatever they see, whatever's put, being placed into them, if they see homosexuality in the house, mm -hmm. if they see drugs mm -hmm. in the house, in their mind, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So we are faced now with some challenges because the world is throwing everything, everything at, at our, at mm -hmm. our youth mm -hmm. today. From the school on up. And that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. So as Christians, it's our obligation to uh, put more Christ-like things into their minds mm -hmm. and into their hearts because they're faced with so much negative and wicked things. Mm -hmm. They have to have something to be able to say, hey, man, that's not right. Guard them against that. You know, mm -hmm. and if, if all they see seeing is evil and wicked and, and, and bad and they never see anything positive, they won't know that it's anything positive that exists in the That's world. Right. And, and our story, uh, our lesson today, as far as being a protective family, 
we know that Moses' mom, when she birthed him, mm-hmm. when, she, when he came out, she she said he was he was a goodly child, mm-hmm. and she knew that he had a purpose. That's right. And she did everything in her power as a mother mm-hmm. to protect, protect him. him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything in her power to protect him. That's right. And God already had everything already mm-hmm. lined out. Have. That's right. You That's know, right. all the way from the daughter watching, from Miriam mm-hmm. watching. All the way up. And to Pharaoh's daughter got him out of that basket. Mm-hmm. It was already orchestrated. That's right. Uh, you want to start with the reading? Sure, let's go ahead. And uh, that what we can dig right into it. It says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months, but when she could hide him no longer, she got a pampas basket to hide him, basket for him, excuse me, and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the banks of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of water. And Sister Kitty, before we go and further those that don't understand this story, can you just give a background what was happening? Uh, why this mother, he and Moses? Uh, the Pharaoh at that time didn't want uh, the male. It was, he was just going to do away mm-hmm. with the male children Mm -hmm. because they were becoming too many it was becoming too many of them Mm -hmm. so he didn't want them to be greater than they were at that time Mm -hmm. Uh, and God's covenant with Abraham included specific promises that included Abraham's descendants God promised that Abraham would be the progenitor of a great nation with innumerable descendants. Mm-hmm. He also prophesied that Abraham's descendants would go to a strange country, be enslaved and oppressed, but delivered at a specific time. All of this played into the role of what was going on with this Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. These promises were fulfilled after Jacob's descendants multiplied across the centuries they spent in Egypt. Unfortunately, Egypt's leadership interpreted their population growth as a national security threat. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, they enslaved, ruthlessly oppressed them, and finally resorted to genocide to impede the growth of their male population. It appears that Moses' birth occurred about the time Pharaoh's edict to murder all Hebrew male children became law in Egypt. So that's kind of what was taking place Mm -hmm. and why his mom had to hide him. Mm -hmm. Because the law had come into place Mm -hmm. where all male Hebrew children were to be murdered. Mm -hmm. And Sister Brown, just reading this lesson makes me think to what's going on in our country today with the mass incarceration of African Americans. Mm -hmm. It's like they saw a threat. Mm -hmm. We were starting to become too many. Mm -hmm. And to me, 
That was a way for them to, they didn't murder them, but they put them away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we go back to being a protective family, we have to start teaching our young men that they're going to have to work for a living and they're going to have to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. Because if not, they will fall victim mm -hmm. to the statistics that have been set in place for them. Mm -hmm. And they will continue. We will continue to see our young black males incarcerated, mm -hmm. killing one another, and doing ungodly things yes, because right. they're, they're not being taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, this lesson is just so important because as a race of people, we're going to have to come together and get back to what God intended for us mm -hmm. to have That's right. and to be That's right. as a people. Mm -hmm. And it starts at home. It starts at home. And, and, and it takes strong male leadership. Nowadays, it is Seagull family homes, mm -hmm. you know, and honestly, single mothers really need a strong male influence over our young men, mm -hmm. you know, because a woman cannot tell a man how to be a to man, be a man. Right. you know, she can try, you know, I am a single mother of a son. But I had to get strong male, righteous, mm -hmm. upstanding male, not any kind, right. you know, to help uh, steer him. Because as a woman, a woman cannot tell a man how to be a man, you know. And, uh, and that's just being honest about it, you know. But as a mother, it was my job to find good, godly, upstanding, law-abiding mm -hmm. men to help, mm -hmm. train, and teach him. Because in this society, that's the only way that that can happen. And there was many groups. In fact, Michael Sanders was part of the group uh, that was a part of the mentor mm -hmm. uh, for my son and his growing up. And it took that, mm -hmm. you know. It took them showing them how to be a man, what does it take to be a man. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need today, you know. Yeah. And in this lesson today, they didn't mention uh, Moses' mother, but her her, her name was Jacobet, you know. Uh, and I think it's important to know who the mother is, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I know it says, but her name was Jacobet. And to actually take on that responsibility of hiding this child I mean, if she was found out, she could have been killed, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. But when God has purpose, right. nothing's going to go against that purpose. And it was three three important things that the protection for Moses. He had the mother, mm -hmm. had the sister, mm -hmm. and the adoptive mother. Right. You know, people don't look at that side of it, too. But if the princess... Mm -hmm. had had not taken on Moses, right. he would still be going down that Nile River. So you see how God placed each person in the purpose of Moses' life to protect him. Mm -hmm. There is the mother who hid him for three three months, and she made this basket and sent them down the Nile. And then you had the sister who was standing by to look watching. and watching over him. Mm -hmm. And then you had the princess who God gave the compassion right. To have and recognize that, look, this is a Hebrew child. It was my daddy that committed this Hebrew child to be, be, to be murdered, to mm -hmm. be killed. Mm -hmm. But because of the passion, she took him on. And not only that, then the sister said, hey, I know somebody. Do you want me to get a, a, a mother that can feed this child? Yeah. And what did Miriam go? Who did she go back to get? Mama. Mama. Mm -hmm. So even that, God orchestrated everything, right. even down to the very thing that Pharaoh was against, the enemy is in his house. Right. 
because God purposed everything. And I tell my children all the time, God has purpose for you. Yes. God has purpose for you. And we are here to protect that purpose. Right. And we are here to help you guide on that purpose. Because Moses was the one that's going to lead the children of Israel. And you know, Sister King, I think about all these children that was aborted. Mm-hmm. How many of those children was the, the Moseses and and the Barack Obamas mm-hmm. and, and it could have been the doctor that had the cure for cancer or for this. So all of those purposes was aborted. But God's still plan is still going to go out. Yeah. The enemy is always going to try to use something to abort the plan that God has for these sons. And you know, this is not the first genocide. Right. So, during the birth of Christ, Christ, what happened with the birth of Christ? Mm-hmm. There again, mm-hmm. you know, looking at the fulfillment, you know, the promises of God, you know, and the king back then, like, you know, the wise man told him what was going on. Mm-hmm. So he didn't want that to happen. So he commanded two years on down, mm-hmm. trying to destroy the same thing, yeah. you know. And then you remember back, uh, uh, when the Jews went through that genocide again in was it Germany? Mm-hmm. You know, you see how it just keeps coming back? Mm-hmm. The enemy is steady, trying to abort God's purpose. I don't care how many times he tried, God's purpose is gonna go forth. It is. But he holds us accountable for protecting that family. That's right. And uh Moses' parents accepted this and boldly defied Pharaoh's edict and kept their infant son alive. Hid him for three months. Mm-hmm. And you know, it wasn't easy because they had spies looking. Mm-hmm. But they they hid him and made sure. So that tells me, because they had the other two children. Mm-hmm. So they that was what goes on in this house, stays mm-hmm. in this house. It stayed in that house mm-hmm. because they didn't find out that he was born. Mm-hmm. It says Amram and Joshabab were praying parents aware of God's promise to preserve the nation of Israel. So that means th- those three months, they were doing a lot of praying. Mm-hmm. Prayer produced the spiritual insight that enabled them to discern that God had a unique purpose for their son in fulfilling this promise. Their trust in him and his revelation motivated them to resist and defy social injustice through an act of civil disobedience. Currently, systemic and deliberate acts of social injustice plague our communities. That's right. Acts of social injustice and this nation, Moses' family, bold, nonviolent response to injustice challenges modern believers to follow their example. An intimate relationship with God, faith in God's promises, and an upright character are non-negotiable essentials in the quest for justice that truly honors God. Amen. Wow. We have an example. We this do. is clearly an example mm-hmm. uh, of praying parents. Mm-hmm. It's going to take mom and dad, you know, uh, and I think what's going on in our society. A lot of women uh, are bitter sometimes, and w- when they have these children, they're not having them for the right reason. First of all, we need to get back to the foundation. Get married, mm-hmm. you know, before you have kids. That way all the extra drama that comes along, you won't have it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you commit first. That's right. Say I do first. <laughs> you know, and then plan your children. Mm-hmm. And ask God to be in the midst of your marriage so that when your children are born, you'll know how to raise your children. And not in a toxic environment. Right. So then these these women are having these babies out of wedlock. So that's, I mean, that's where the problem starts. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, you have uh, dissension because dad's not in the home. So now you 
I'm mad because now you got to raise this child. And there's so many different circumstances surrounding single parents. You know, everybody's story is different. Mm -hmm. But if you do things the way that God intended for it to be, it has to work out. It, there's just no choice. It has to work out. Every child that's born has a purpose. purpose. That's right. Anybody that's living has a purpose that's for right. being here. That's and right. that purpose, God is going to fulfill that purpose. Mm -hmm. He's going to make sure his plan is seen all the way through. That's right. Regardless of the situations, regardless of your trials, your tribulations, your setbacks, it's still a part mm -hmm. of the plan. That's right. If you trust him. So Josephette took two specific precautions when she placed her son in the ark. Mm -hmm. She placed Moses among the reeds to prevent him from being swept away. She also stationed her daughter close by to guard against unexpected danger. Mm -hmm. However, God was working behind the, the scenes, scenes, orchestrating Moses' mm -hmm. survival, yes, deliverance, right. and placement. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly where he was going to end up. That's right. He knew exactly who was going to find mm -hmm. him. He knew exactly where he was going to be placed. In the palace. <laughs> where he so... Purpose. When, when God has a purpose and a plan for your life, you have to trust it. That's right. You just have to trust it. And he didn't say everything was going to be peaches and cream. Because mm -hmm. it's not. Everything's not going to go the way we think mm -hmm. this should go. Mm -hmm. Or even the way we plan it. You know, sometimes we plan out the whole month. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And, and sometimes like it does not go the way you planned it. Mm -hmm. But just understand, God has a purpose for everything that we go through it's while right. we're here on this earth. Yes, and it's a choice because I look back at Moses' mother. I mean, the pain that it took for her to put this child in a basket. You know, a mother's love is powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, she hid this child for three mm -hmm. months. And then she had to give up the child to protect the child. But the, the heart wrench, you know. But I believe she said, God, I'm going to trust you. Faith. You know what? That's right, yeah. faith. I, right, faith. I have to trust you mm -hmm. with my child. Mm -hmm. And as parents today, we got to have that kind of faith. No matter what that child does, no matter what that child does, if he gets off track, God, I trust you to put him back on track that he or she will go in the purpose that you planned. That's right. And we have to trust that. Right. If they're going to take us through some heartaches and some pain and, and, and Lord, you know, whatever situation, they're going to be hard-headed, they're going to be disobedient, they're going to do some crazy things, but we have to stay online and say, God, you promised purpose in my child's life, and I'm going to trust you mm -hmm. to fulfill it. Because, you know, and then, you know, thank God for the adoptive mother. Right. You know, I thank God for all these adoptive parents. Right. You know, because for some reason, the parent couldn't take care of that child. They recognized that. So they gave that child for adoption. So adoptive parents, if you have adopted children, you are walking in purpose. That's right. Because we still, still part of protecting that family. That's right. The Pharaoh's daughter named the baby Moses, which in Egyptian means is born, and in Hebrew, draw out. Indeed, Moses' physical salvation was symbolic of the birth of, of Israel's liberator to draw his people out of Egypt. He became a member of the royal household under the close protection of the very man who decreed death. A father's life. I mean, for all Hebrew males, mm -hmm. as Egyptian royalty, Moses was trained in Egypt's advanced knowledge and wisdom. God used the faith of Moses' parents and the compassion of an Egyptian princess to lay the foundation for his preparation as Israel's deliverer from Egypt's ungodly and unjust society. 
The first weapon God used to achieve it was a baby's cry. <laughs> God can and will yeah. use the weakest things to do his greatest work. That's right. In the future, as Moses learned to rely on God, God will use him to do an amazing work in his name. Local churches can promote mm -hmm. needed change in unjust laws and social injustices that oppress the weak and vulnerable by demonstrating unshakable reliance on God mm -hmm. and reflecting his character in every act of nonviolent resistance. Wow. This lesson is just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, because the lives of children worldwide are jeopardized by unprotective and abusive parents and systemic injustices. Mm -hmm. We should be doing all we can to protect these babies. That's right. At all costs. Mm -hmm. But it's going to start with our men. Our men are going to have to take their rightful places That's right. in the home. And I mean, they're going to have to go. It doesn't matter how bad they don't want to see their baby mama. They're going to have to stand up for their children. Mm -hmm. Because if not, this world is waiting to slatch them. And down. once the world gets them, it's, it's, it's hard. But we have to continue to pray for our babies mm -hmm. daily. And we have to continue to put this word in them daily. Mm -hmm. So that they'll know how to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's right. Because if they don't have a word in them, they won't know how to face the challenges that are coming to them. And they won't have the armor. And it's going to take that. Unfortunately, our world does not treat everyone equally. The Egyptians treated the Israelites unfairly. Going as far as commissioning Hebrew infanticide. Baby killing. Mm. All sorts of injustices occur in every society and community. That's right. Do you empathize with those who are treated wrongly? Take time to pray specifically for groups and individuals who are suffering from tyranny and injustice. That's a simple task that we can do on this week. Just pray for those that are being treated unfairly. And who are suffering tyranny and injustice. Amen. Thank you for tuning in this week Amen. to our weekly Bible study. Our lesson topic for next Sunday. Uh, the devotional reading. Exodus 14, 21 through 31. The topic is expressing thankfulness. thankfulness. The background scripture is Deuteronomy 31, 30. 32 and 47 and the printed text is Deuteronomy 32 3 through 6 10 through 14 and verse 18 we're going to close with a word of prayer father thank you for assuring us of your power yes. protection and presence when we confront and resist the evils of social injustice in our communities grant us the wisdom to become the protective family needed to support those most affected. May we reflect your holiness and honor your name as we seek to promote your justice for all of humanity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.